Plastico here, coming at you with another video review. We are covering Voltron Force today. Starting out with the Yellow Lion. Here it is. This is a reproduction of the 1984 version. This was re-released in 1997. The only difference between this particular lion is it doesn't have any firing missile gimmicks. The teeth on them have been milled down a lot less than what they used to be. It's very spring loaded. It's very very stiff. But the lower teeth used to be slightly longer on these. It also used to have a firing missile gimmick here on the back. And that's pretty much about the only real difference. It really has a simple transformation. You have fold out all the legs, which are on nice ratchets. The only thing is, is when you do transform these, you do need to take high care in actually doing so. You can wear away the chrome fairly easy but that's just something that happens to chrome over time no matter what it is very 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 stiff joints on this one but as you can see he looks really cool has a very nice posing ability it really does have a lot of um, posability and the legs the legs can move around quite a bit head does move up and down oh and does have a comb tail that flips out. It's very cool. It does have the raising missile launching gimmick that can actually move around, but it no longer fires. And the other thing that they took away from this particular line was they used to have two firing little missile gimmicks here within the ears that you could pop out. It no longer has them. Other than that, it's a very cool little lion. On to my recommendations. Yes, my suggestion is to get these. They have a lot of die cast, there's a lot of clicking, a lot of spring loaded stuff going on in here. And they are designed very, very well. It does have the port here on the back that folds in, so that way you can actually put the larger lion's leg in there. Very cool, very nice. Lots of sculpt to detail on this thing. They did not leave out detail at all on this. This is exactly the way it looked like when it was released in 1984. Although this was a reproduction, they did reproductions right back during the 90s. They didn't sculpt out on anything. Really the only thing they did was pull away the uh, missile launching gimmicks and shorter teeth for the safety precautions but this doesn't stop just here this actually came with 
weaponry. The weaponry is a gold chrome, unlike the original, which is a silver. It's really cool. They do have these little tabs here. And you are pushing chrome against chrome here when you do this, guys. So keep that in mind when you do this. Some people might be cringing right now because I'm doing this, but I'm doing this to show you guys. I don't normally store the weapons like this. I normally keep them packed away in the large box. And normally this one here would actually have a double blaster cannon as well. I actually don't have that. It's the only missing bit that I'm missing out of this entire set. This stuff has a lot of detail on it though. Very cool toy. And this chrome bits do not feel like they're gonna break or anything. Now I wouldn't push too hard on quite a few of them because they can be very finicky but that's what the yellow line looks like when it's all armed up. So this is my video review of the yellow lion. Today we are covering the green lion number three. As you can tell, he's significantly smaller. He's a lot tinier than the other two lions, obviously, because he doesn't need to really hold all the weight. But the great thing is, this thing still has a ton of die cast. Now, the only difference between this lion compared to the original release is this part here was chrome and so was the tail this re-release has a gray plastic and a black plastic I'm kinda thankful for this because this would actually get scratched off fairly easily you would think especially if you had the original production another thing that's different are these fins these fins were not existent on the original. I really don't understand why they did this. I think they did this for easeabil for the ability for you to be able to grab it by the fin to actually move the arm up and down. And also to probably assist with pulling it out to separate from the black lion when it is in arm mode. But I believe that's the only reason this even exists. Anyhow, moving on to transformation fairly simple just pull this little sucker down and these do have click as well you would think only the click would be in the big lines but no it's it's in this one as well you actually have pretty good click it's not too bad now my suggestion with this is to not get too rough because these are a lot smaller than the other ones so take your time when you transform these guys anyhow let's move these out there we go. There's the green lion in his lion mode. Now you guys see that crazy little switch here. He does have rocket punching action. I love that. I'm sorry, but rocket punch is just the bomb. This, to me, I think really sells the toy. This is a simple fact that this actually still has rocket punching. He does have articulation in the waist because he has an arm, and he does turn, but you can do a 360 if you want to, so you're going to have a weird looking lion that's running around like that. But that's about all the real articulation you're going to get out of him. His mouth does open only so far, that's as far as it opens. And also note, these are a lot shorter and they are not as sharp as the originals were. The originals, these were dead sharp, they would pretty much cut you. Anyhow, this guy doesn't stop there with the gimmicks. He actually has weapons. Two of them. Now, only one of these actually has a molded peg, while the other does not. You take this one, and you can plug it into any of these slots. It's got slots on every leg. So if you don't want it here, you can put it here if you feel like. I tend to put it up like this. Mainly because this, you guessed it, goes in his mouth. Stick it in just like so. Close it around. Nice and gentle. And there you go. 
there is our green lion, all armed up and ready to go. Today we are going to cover the red lion. Yes, the red lion. He is the same size as the green lion that I showed you guys earlier, and yes, he is smaller than the yellow and the blue. Lots of die cast, very hefty. Very, very, very cool. Now, to point out the differences, shorter teeth than the original from 1984. Also, this is not chrome, like the 1984 version. Same with this, this is not chrome. And this little fin bit here was added. Now, if you guys seen my Green Lion review, you will notice this, I pointed out, was non-existent on the green. Same case for the red. Very, very cool lion. Has lots of capability of doing lots of movement. Just like the other one. Z360, if you want it. Lots of click there, by the way. And it has it. Anyhow, simple transformation. Move these bits down. Like I said, take care when you do this because you don't want to snap anything or cause anything to chafe a lot. You gotta think you are moving chrome against chrome here, so it's gonna possibly have some slight flaking, but I wouldn't think too much. I haven't ha ended up with a lot of flakes or anything on my hands, but I've been pretty fortunate so far on this. Anyhow, like the green lion, he has got rocket punching action. Yes, I hit the camera. <laughs> Very cool. Opening jaw. Closing jaw. Opening jaw. Closing jaw. Opening claw. Closing claw. <laughs> Anyhow. Just like the green lion, he does come with weapons. Three of them. Now, what's odd here is neither one of these have pegs. This, on the other hand, does. This is a laser blaster. It goes only on one side. It's got this little thing, and you'll stick it back here. Or up front, if you feel like. It can be very finicky putting these in, so take care when you do that. If I can get this one to go in, then. I just had it in earlier. There you go. And these two, you're going to open the mouth all the way on. And then you're going to stack these two on top of each other. Now, my suggestion is to load them one at a time. Because it'll load and actually fall down into the mouth fairly easily. Mainly because this thing's got to hold that ginormous sword, too. So. Might take me a second here to actually get it. Just about had it. It's all sideways. Come on, dude, don't do this thing. Actually, you turn it upside down so it's a little easier to load in because. The upper part of the mouth is a lot deeper than the bottom, so it'll actually hold. And then there you go. Very, very menacing looking blades sticking out of his mouth. Because he's a lion. Anyhow. Today we are we recovering number four, the blue lion. This is from the same line. It is fully die cast, lots of chrome. Has some slight variations though. The variations for this one here is it did not come with any missiles. So where the missiles would go, it would actually have a spring loading gimmick in here. And another one that most people are not really aware of is this thing lifts up on the head portion. 
It's very stiff on this one, but it does. And the original would actually have a hole milled out here. And right here where this silver is, this chrome right here, there would be a button you would press and it would fire another missile out. That's the only difference between this one and the original from 1984. Simple transformation, just like the yellow line, you just fold out his legs. Very cool. I do really enjoy these. These are really, really neat little toys. I highly suggest getting this set for anybody that is a major Voltron fan because it's about as close to a masterpiece as you're going to really get. Stands very well. He does have a flip out little tail, which is yellow on this one versus the chrome. And there you go. His head does move up and down, and he does have the spring loaded jaw, which is kind of nice. It does have the shaved down um, teeth, where normally they wouldn't, and does have the spring loaded tail. Now, the fun doesn't stop there. This guy, as well as the yellow one, comes with the yellow chromed weapons. I honestly found it really weird that they actually picked a yellow chrome for these. This actually has a rocket launcher. It's pretty cool. A lot of molded detail in there. You can see it's got this nice rockets all in there. Pretty solid. I do like this bit. And these actually tap right in. Now on this particular one, until I did some research, I don't know exactly where these went, but these actually just kind of fold in, or they push in, but you have to kind of wedge these. Now I don't know if it's a production flaw on mine, but a lot of you guys might not have very tight fitting ones. This one here seems to be fairly loose. But as you can see, as it's all armed up, it looks really menacing. It's really cool. It's got all these nice weapons that pop out on the sides. So that way they can take out anybody if they need to. Aliens apparently are fairly tough and very resilient, resilient to um, firepower. So we got to have these nice sharp pointy weapons. Now, to let you guys know, when it comes to these weapons, these can actually be very finicky. Unlike the uh, shield part from the yellow line, this part here has these little bits here that stick out. Those could possibly break off. Same with the tips on any of the weaponry. Mine are in fairly good condition. Don't really have any bad chrome wear or anything going on. But there is a lot of detail in this thing. I really do like it. So, like I said, my suggestion, pick these guys up. These are the die-cast version. In 1998, they re-released the entire line. And when they did, the line did not come with any of the add-on weapons. And it also was nerfed down to a plastic. It was not die-cast. So the 97 Trend Masters is the only one you're going to find that actually has die cast that is fairly decent and has a lot of click and does not feel like it's going to fall apart in your hands. Today we're doing number one, the Black Lion. Yes, you snarling at you. <laughs> Anyhow, here is the Black Lion. Yes, I know it's kind of weird that he's in this mode, because this is how it looks when kind of like pulling out of the container. The box I showed you guys at the very beginning, every one of these I have left transformed in the default mode, so that way you guys will know how to transform them the second you pull them out of the box. Anyhow, moving on to the transformation into the lion mode. You're going to want to clip these up just like so. And here in the back, you've got this bit here. You're going to raise this bit up. Take care when you do this, by the way, because this can break very easily. 
Just letting you know, because I've done a lot of research on it. This doesn't really have any ratcheting here, but it's not really needed because when you push this back down, it does have a stopping point. So. Same here on this side. Let me flip this portion here up. When you do this, it kind of gives it an automorph. Let me do that again so that way you guys can see it. It does have an automorph. So it kind of pulls it out on its own. It's kind of nice. And grab it and pull it all the way out. Close this up. Close these down. Push his feet down. <clears throat> Oh, you know, one thing I have mis mistransformed, this would not be sticking out. This would actually be in between here. It actually fits right in between. There you go. There is the lion. It is full on mode. Now, this guy is identical to. The original. The only difference is when you put this thing into its full-on combined mode. The face is not blue. It is black on this one. Basically the reason they did this is so that way you can tell the difference between the original and the reproduction. But everything else on him is identical. He has a lot of die cast, a lot of heft, very heavy. Very very cool though. But he does have gimmicks. He does have an opening and closing jaw, which you can tell sometimes the head wants to come down with it, which it does that sometimes. Legs are fully posable. And he also comes with weapons. Three of them. They are gold plastic, gold chrome, which is funny because something I did not point out is the chrome that's actually on the line is chrome. The gold chrome is different. Anyhow, you got these big gigantic pegs right here. These will actually fit in here if you wish or back here. I tend to push them here in the back so that way I don't even put any pressure in here to mess this connection up so that way it doesn't affect the rest of the lines. And then you push this bit here in the back just like so. And finally, open up his teeth. And these teeth are slightly shorter than the original. Not by much though. Just a safety thing that they did. And then you will just close the mouth around its blade weapon, if it will stay. Now mine is a little loose, but that's what happens when it comes to age. Things just don't stay where they used to. Anyhow, there we go. There is the Black Lion. Anyhow, let me bring out the other groups and we will go over the entire group as a whole. And as you can see, this entire group as a whole is really, really, really cool. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most iconic pieces you can get in any collection. I don't care if you collect Transformers, if you collect Robotech, Macross, Super Sentai, anything like that. This is a group that honestly you should acquire. If you can get your hands on these guys for a fairly good price, I highly suggest you do. Today we're going to cover the combination of Voltron. Uh, as you guys have seen from my previous videos, I showed you pretty much how to combine everything and put all the weapons and such on them. I've stripped them down to the Bear Lions, and we're going to combine these guys. Anyhow, let's start out with the Black Lion. Now, to let you guys know, First and foremost, on the Black Lion, these are all chrome. You will be placing these within the back of each one of these lions. 
So take care when you guys are inserting that so that way you don't scratch your chrome very much. It might happen sometimes. Anyhow, first thing you're going to do is flip down the legs. Flip them out all the way. That way they're like that. Next thing you'll do, split apart the wings, tuck the tail away into this channel. After that, fold down these bits, fold the paw into itself, and close it up. Remember when I said to be very careful with these? Yes, be very good with those because you can break them off very easily if you're not careful. Anyhow, next you're going to do, we'll take these forward and then we're going to stop there on the black line. Next one we're going to move on to is our yellow line. Same thing, tuck the tail away, hold up the paws, and the paws on this, you're pretty much going to fold and retract them down to about like that. Put the head up, and then retract and fold in the rear paws. Now we've formed a foot. Cool thing is, it's got this die cast bit here that sticks out. Looks really well for a heel spur. Moving on to the blue line. Flip up the tail. Fold up the legs. Flip up the head, fold down the rear feet. We have another foot. Moving on to our green line. Same thing, I'm gonna fold his little feet up. Now remember, like I said, take care when you do this because these are very, 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 they're fairly thin. I wouldn't say they're real prone to breaking, but you can break them if you're a little rough with them. And fold in the back. Now, something I did not show was this tail bit does have articulation up to there and can go all the way down. Obviously, this is going to form a shoulder connection. There is one arm. We'll be on to our red lion. Same thing. Gonna fold up his little feet. Then away. Just like so. And then do the same for the back. And then fold down the tail. Here we go, got all five pieces ready to form Voltron. The next thing we're gonna do is take our two boot pieces, put them next to each other. Then we're going to take these and push them in. Now, on the back of these, there are little bitty notches you'll actually see. The connectors have a little piece sticking out right here that will actually latch onto that. My suggestion is to push this up with your thumb, place it in, and then release. Then it'll hold. You'll do the same with the other one. Keep in mind you're pushing chrome bits into plastic 
into some die cast. Don't let that scare you. Holds together fairly well. Next thing you do, take your arms, lug them in. Just like so. Now, spin them around. Take these two wing bits, fold them up slightly, fold these out all the way, and then bring it all the way up. When you do this, be sure you straighten these out all the way because they are in a bit of a double hinge here. Cool thing is, these notches here are actually cut out for the shoulders. So, there's no guessing where you're supposed to position them. Spin them around. And then, as they say, all oh, form the head. Flip this down. All the way. The head will actually fit all into a channel. And then, lift up the horn. There we go. There's Voltron in his full-on mold. Now, the fun doesn't stop there. He conveniently comes with his shield and the blazing sword obviously tell it's very big. I mean, here's a legend-sized bumblebee. Very large. Anyway, move his arms up. And you can bend them at the elbow. Does have some nice click, by the way. Let me do move this around. One that has very good click. His articulation is not much. I mean, he does have ability to slouch over, but what do you expect? He is fully diecast, so he will weigh a lot on your shelf. Just to give you as a heads up. Anyhow, take the shield, put it in this hand. As for the sword, we'll slightly open the hand a little bit. Wedge it in between. Actually, it'll slide right in between. And then when you do that, the two bits here that are hanging off the sides of the sword will help hold it in position. It's also got this crest guard here that kind of pushes against there, so it doesn't allow it to fall over. And there you go. There's Voltron with his sword and shield. Just to give you guys a bit of a size comparison, got MP01 here. Obviously, Peekaboo is prime. Bumblebee. Legends Fig. And for you classics fanatics, this kind of shows you just how large this toy really is. Anyway, moving on to my recommendations dealing with this marvelous piece of work from 1997, I highly suggest you pick one up. The reason being is not only is Voltron a piece of history for most kids, especially since it 
derived, it came from like your Super Sentai and such. This pretty much was the predecessor to a lot of Japanese stuff. It's a very, very awesome toy. It's got a lot of die cast. Holds together very well. And in order to buy the entire set, roughly will run you anywhere between 150 to 200 bucks. Sometimes you can find them for around $90 if you're lucky, but most of the time they're pretty worn condition. Anyhow, this has been Plasticon, and this has been yet another review. And this is me signing off. Peace out, you guys.